everyone. I'm Leanna Hunt, and uh, this is my oldest, Victoria. Hi. Um, I am a mom of four and been married to David for 21 years. It's really, a really long time. We were college sweethearts. I am a health and wellness coach focusing on mindset and helping people be able to, specifically women, be able to shift their mindset so that they can have really the outcomes in life and, and everything that they want. And I've tried really, really hard to create that healthy mindset with my children. And I think that's kind of what's brought us here together and the story that we've shared. So Victoria. Yeah. Um, hi, I'm Victoria Hunt. I am 17, almost 18. I'm a senior in high school. And um, yeah, that's it, basically. <laughs> Let me ask you the first question that I always ask everyone to start these conversations, and then we'll get into how we came to be here today. Victoria, Leanna, what do you think people's first impression of you is? I think a lot of it is, wow, you're really tall. I get that one a lot. I'm 6'1". Um, that's the only thing popping up in my mind at the moment. Um, I think a lot of it is also we or like our family we try to be as friendly as possible so i like making new friends and meeting new people and so being able to um do that and talk to new people is always something that i love to do and so coming across as friendly is something that's really important to me and so i try to do that with everyone i think i would probably hopefully say the same like <laughs> hopefully people think yes yeah, friendly um, we tried to same thing, raise our kids to not be afraid to be able to talk to people and engage and, and really try to make somebody say, and it's something we actually pray for on a regular basis is that we'll be able to find those people that are struggling and that we can make their day better. And so I hope that when people, maybe a first impression is that I was friendly too. So I'm glad that Victoria said that, that <laughs> makes me feel like as a mom, I'm doing my job, Check. one of my jobs. Check. <laughs> I love that. Well, I can speak from my personal first impression of you. Um, I reached out to you on Instagram out of nowhere, literally, and you got back to me right away. And that definitely was a very kind gesture and very fulfilling for me. So to give everyone an idea of kind of how we got to this moment this morning to film, I saw a Facebook post that Leanna had posted and it was being shared by someone. And at the very bottom, it had your Instagram link. And it made me want to reach out to you. And I was so happy that I clicked it in that moment and got to your Instagram, sent you the message. But because when I went back to Facebook, the post was gone. So your responding to me in that moment was super exciting for me. And I'm sure you get tons of requests and to hear it right back from you and be able to set up time for this conversation is such an honor. So thank you both. Thank you for asking yeah. us. We really, I mean, thank you. Just thank you so much. You're welcome. So let's tell everybody what that post was about and how and why we're here. So I had made that post. It's actually an old post. It was made two years ago. Uh, Victoria was a sophomore and she She's had a little baby. <laughs> a little baby. <laughs> she had tried out for and made the sophomore volleyball team. And she spent that whole last year just with some amazing one-on-one -on -one support from basically I call them one of like your, one of your angels, one of those people that shows up and blesses the lives of your children that you'll never forget. And her name is Josie and she knows that, but she spent an entire summer and year really helping Victoria learn the skills of volleyball. She was tall, six one, and my mom played volleyball in high school. And so many people asked, would ask her if she either played basketball or, or volleyball. volleyball. That was the first thing, the first they comment. Ask her wow, you're really tall. Do you play basketball or, or volleyball? What, or what team are you play? Where yeah. do you play? It's really like what she was asked. So she ended up making the team. And before I go into the post, Victoria, why don't you tell them about maybe what makes sports for you maybe different than for other kids? Yeah. So I was born with morning glory syndrome. And so like in my right eye, the optic nerve looks like a morning glory flower instead of what a nerve should be like, which is a line. And so that prevents me from seeing in my right eye and having zero depth perception. So playing sports, especially like with a ball, 
is extremely difficult and tedious because I don't know my sense of direction very well. Like I can drive and everything, but I don't know my sense of direction in sports and like in a sports setting. And so being able to try to navigate playing volleyball for the first time and like being on a team was super hard for me, even though I've done sports my whole life, like soccer, swim, I've done 12 years of dance, ballroom, all of this stuff. But volleyball, I think, was probably the hardest because of the back and forth with it. So being able to navigate that was <laughs> was tough. But So she worked really hard and made the team. And I was just so proud of her. And she she showed up and she was serving and she was, you know, she was doing the best that she could. And there was one game that I was sitting there and I still don't know who the women were behind me because people ask me that all the time or was it someone in the background of your picture no I don't know who they were I don't think I saw them again um you know I was just so focused on the game and in that moment I heard them commenting on Victoria's inability to hit the ball and they were really frustrated at her and they didn't even know her and I remember in that moment just being so overcome with like anger and and frustration and I was really emotional but in the moment it didn't feel right I I was kind of you know like where you're after it's like you replay it and you're like oh I should have done that in the moment I wasn't able to turn around and say anything I was just shocked and I'm not the kind of person that is confrontational and I you know make things awkward and so I literally just sat there I was it was our first year on the team so I didn't really know a lot of the other moms either and I didn't feel it was my place to turn around and and make a scene and based on how we try to raise our children to be Christ-like and to lead with kindness and love it just didn't feel like it was the right time to turn around because that's maybe we'll go into that but that is the number one thing people have made as far as a negative comment is that they wish I would have turned around and said something right then so I just want to make that clear then in the moment I just couldn't I didn't feel I like my body wouldn't even let me like turn around I didn't want to look at them I, maybe it's I'm not supposed to know who they were you know like maybe that's part of that and so I just sat there and listened and then I went home and made that Facebook post about my thoughts and about uh, how we choose to judge other people and how we choose to um, maybe make assumptions about them without actually knowing who they were because as a mom sorry she doesn't like going to get no, no, it's okay as a mom, I just couldn't have been prouder of her in that moment, Aww. knowing everything that she had overcome to be there in that moment, to show up almost blind in one eye, zero depth perception, and be able to just serve the ball and play middle position as a six foot one tall, beautiful girl that she is, <laughs> and how hard she had worked to get there. And as we judge others, I think the whole concept of my post, as we judge others, we don't know their story and we don't know the journey that they took to get there. And that's what I want to remind people of. So. And that is, sorry. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm tearing up over here. I don't know if you can see, but <laughs> I am, um, I'm right there in the stands with you hearing these things and I'm not a parent, but I can only imagine if someone was saying not nice things about my loved one that I knew had put in so much time and work and effort. Um, the whole reason I do these interviews is exactly what you described in your post, which is also why it spoke to me besides the situation itself. We don't know their story. We don't know where people have been before the moment we encounter them in time. And we pass judgment, we make negative comments, we think negative thoughts, and that's not fair. So I hope by doing these interviews and sharing people's stories that everyone can identify with each other as human beings and we can all gain a little bit more respect for each other. Victoria, I have lots of questions for you, but I want to yeah. finish um, up the post conversation um, with you, Liana. What were some of the comments the women were making? Um, I mean, I don't, that was like two years ago. So I don't really, you know, as far as their exact words, it was really just based on, you know, that she shouldn't be playing in that spot, you know, and I, and that how she, shouldn't be missing the ball because of her height and so we kind of look at people like Corey who's Victoria who's 6'1 and be like oh well she shouldn't miss that you know and so when we're sitting there in that moment and quickly judging others um I just want to bring back into something that's coming to my mind as I've been recently studying the work of Byron Katie and she's an amazing author if you haven't read Loving What Is um but she talks about there's three types of business in the world there's my business 
there's your business and there's God's business and God's business can also be seen as reality actually what's happening. And so when we sit there as humans, we are going to judge because at a time when there, we were like cavemen or whatever, we needed our judgment to keep us alive, right? We needed to make those judgments so that we wouldn't get eaten by a tiger or that we could make fire. We could know what was safe and what wasn't safe. So as far as judgment goes, I think that's something that is okay for us to own as human beings that we pass judgment because judgment keeps us alive. Ultimately it, it can like, you know, the fear that we have about like, Oh, maybe they're a person that we should stay away from, you know, so it can are those initial thoughts, but really when we focus on just our own business, it allows everybody else to live in a space of their business. Those women and anyone that was, um, didn't know Victoria, which was 90% of the people because she was brand new in that moment. They did not know her. They did not know where she had been. They did not know the work she had done to get there. She, they didn't know me. They didn't know the investments emotionally I had made as a mother and, and raising her. And she's had how many surgeries? I've had eight surgeries. She's had eight eye surgeries to try to help align her eye. And she had to patch for the first eight years you know, and there's yeah. so many things and, and rude things and that people would say and, and how they would stare at her. And, and so just, just remember that when you're in that moment and you want to judge, yeah, remember, oh, it's okay. All right. I'm getting that thought. I should judge somebody, but really it's, what do you do with that judgment? Do you just think a kind thought and be like, wow, well, she, I can turn that around. She's probably doing the best that she can, or maybe she had a rough day and realize that the only thoughts that really you're in charge of are your own and not worrying about the path of somebody else. Does that make sense? 100%. So that yeah. was actually a new year's resolution that I made, which was part of the path to this show and doing these interviews. And it was exactly that it was, we have our thoughts, we have our initial judgment. And it was, if that's negative, how can I turn that positive and how can I curb negative thoughts about others and be kinder in my own mind? That was exactly what I did. Thank you, Leanna, for sharing all of that and sharing about how you felt about the situation from your perspective, literally in the stands, literally looking down on the situation. I want to switch over to Victoria. Tell me again, the name of the syndrome that you were born with. It's called morning glory syndrome. Yeah. Like the flower, I guess, because of what it looks like on and a scan or something it resembles a flower inside like my your eye. optic nerve should look like a tiny pinpoint and hers if you see it under a scan is like ballooned out like a flower oh wow mm -hmm. so your mom mentioned a number of surgeries throughout the course of your life and wearing a patch I think you said for the first eight years of your life mm -hmm. yeah I was I would wear it how many times a week? Like three times a week. No, we, we're supposed to every day. <laughs> no, we do not. <laughs> um, I would wear it for a good half of the day and having surgeries on top of that. I, something that I've grown accustomed to like drawing attention to my eye, especially because I have scar tissue in the corner and people will like stop in the hall and ask me what's wrong with my eye. Or if, even when I'm like in the middle of a conversation, They'll just stare at me and be like, is something wrong? Is something wrong with your eye? But it's something that I've grown up with. So I'm kind of used to it. And when you were younger in the, in the beginning of, of figuring all of this out and your interactions with others and their reactions to what you were going through, how did you feel? I felt kind of like, an outcast is a very, very strong word. Definitely not like that. I just felt like, too seen like I felt like everyone could notice and everyone was noticing and talking to me about it and as I've grown up I've grown more like comfortable with it and I'm like yeah like this is part of who I am when I was little I didn't like not being like everyone else I think is the best way to put it and you said people I love the way you explain it by the way being too oh seen. thank you <laughs> You're welcome. I've never heard anyone describe it that way. And I think that's a beautiful way to say, um, to say it. I, I think that's definitely something I'm sure people would shy away from is like you said, being too seen, too noticed, too yeah. visible. 
Um, when people would ask you questions, did you find they were asking them in a friendly way, inquisitive way, or was it more of like, what's wrong with you? There are definitely a little, little bits of both in it. Um, I think growing up, like that's the whole, whole process. When I was little, people were just curious. There were some instances in like elementary school and junior high where it was kind of negative and they were, they weren't just questioning for curiosity. They did like not bully me about it, but they did use it in a negative way. And then there are people who are just like wondering if something really is wrong, which I don't blame them for at all. Like they're just curious. And so I've had a little bit of both through everything. Yeah. Well, I think th and that makes sense. I mean, kids are kind of inquisitive and can be cruel at times yeah. and may not know the best way to ask questions, but congratulations to you for being so empowered to provide the information about your situation. Oh, and thank you. you're welcome. And it seems to me that over the years, you've grown more comfortable, not only talking about it, but sharing and educating about it. And that's quite a big position to hold for a 17, almost 18 year old, what do you think? <laughs> if I can, if I can like educate people about stuff like this and like show that not everyone is built the same way, which I'm like, we're told over and over again, but still some people don't like realize that or they don't know what to do in that situation. And so like to be able to educate, educate and show people, I think it's something that like I was meant to do or like I can do given this because I can't change the way I am. And so the only thing I can do is to be able to show people and to educate everyone. Absolutely teach, get on that, <laughs> you know, get on that platform and share your story and empower others to embrace themselves. I think that is so important. And like I said, for you to be 17, almost 18, kudos, Leanna, way to go, mom. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Seriously, like that is, that is strength that, like you said, Leanna, about the way that she handles things and how it makes you proud as a parent. This is a product of how you've helped her through those situations that she just described. And that makes me feel empowered to go out and do things and share stories and reflect on our conversation as I move through life, which I do with all of these conversations that I have. I take something from everyone and trust me there it's only been 10 minutes and there are so many things I can take from both of you <laughs> awesome. well the coolest thing Leslie too is like Victoria there is a world full of kids that are struggling in their own way trying to deal with their own disorder you know with with what makes them not like everybody else and we're filled with social media you know and everything can look perfect and you can filter your pictures and you can do whatever to, to try to be that normal kid. But what I learned reading all these stories, I mean, they're heartbreaking as far as how their kids or them have been treated through sports. Um, but what I, and how mean other people's parents were to their kids, like that parents have this right. They feel like if they're playing a baseball game to yell at another child, you know, but the biggest thing I have learned, and I hope that Victoria knows this and feels this and takes this in her life, is that no matter what, you can decide and choose to be who you want to be, no matter what. And there's players that I've heard from that played through their college career with some sort of like an eye, you know, blind in one eye or dealing with other things because they made the choice and they stood up. And they, when you stand up like that and make that choice, you're basically telling everybody else it's none of their business <laughs> and I can be and act and have and do whatever it is that I want. And when we set high goals like that and we support our children that way, amazing things happen. And Victoria is just one of those, Victoria is one of those amazing teenagers that we are blessed to have as our daughter. Uh -huh. Thank you. She, is, she is an honor student. She serves on her student council that she's been selected from the school. She has run the entire service program for her high school. She has served in her youth group at church. She has held leadership positions there. She has amazing singing voice. She can play the harp. <laughs> she, I mean, just the things that she has done in her life, it just shows that she is choosing every day 
that she's going to show up. And as a parent, if you're watching this and your child is dealing with something, and maybe Corey can give a message to other children too, but to the parents, don't limit your children. Don't limit their children. Let them be the ones that determine what they can and cannot do and what they will and will not do. And your job is to support them and be their cheerleader and to cry with them when they need that because that's come up too, because sometimes kids are mean. And sometimes she didn't like that she was born with this. But then on the flip side, she's been able to just bless our life. And she, everyone that knows her, if you ask any of her friends, they would tell you what a kind and loving and sweet person she is, always wanting to make other people feel good about themselves. And that's just who she is. And it comes through so Sorry. much. Uh -huh. And your, your, your energy is so amazing. And your love and affection for your daughter and desire for other kids to feel good is so heartwarming. Thanks, <laughs> Victoria, how do you feel hearing your mom say all those nice things about you? She's bragging, definitely, but <laughs> just kidding. Um, it's awesome to have like such supportive parents who definitely didn't close any doors my entire childhood. Stop crying! You're gonna make me cry. Okay, like um, <laughs> but you make me cry. <laughs> to be able to have those experiences and to be able to grow up with such a supportive mindset and supportive parents. It's really an amazing thing. That is wonderful. You guys are very blessed with the relationship that you have. And I'm, I'm very, very happy for you. I'm very proud of you, Victoria, from everything that you've said. I've known you for 15 minutes and everything that you've said is incredible. And everything that your mom said about why she's so proud of you makes a hundred percent sense. Um, oh, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> What is something that would surprise people to know about both of you? Oh, that's a good question. Well, playing the harp, I think, is something that's interesting and not really well known as an instrument, but especially in Utah, like where we live, I've been blessed with great teachers. And so I, I love the harp. I haven't played it these past few years because high school got very busy and I <laughs> could not, but yeah, me and my mom both play and some of our family. And so sharing that, yeah, we usually get a few reactions out of people. So my aunt plays, so Victoria's a third generation harp harpist. My aunt plays, I play. It sounds so play, fancy when and, you say that. <laughs> and Victoria, but when we married into my husband's family, my husband has a niece that's a professional harpist too. And so it's so crazy. So on both sides of the family, there's, there's harpists on our family. So. Well, that is definitely, that is something that is surprising, not, <laughs> but still beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And another bond that you guys have and can do together. It just mm -hmm. keeps getting better. <laughs> 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 um, well, I can't thank you guys enough for sitting down today and sharing your story and how this experience has united not only the two of you, but also, like you said, 60,000 shares of a single Facebook post where you just shared your feelings, right? right. Um, I want to touch on one thing, um, Leanna, with you before I ask you guys the final question um, for this conversation. You mentioned in your introduction that you are a health coach. Um, what led you to being a health coach? I think I dealt with um, my own issues around food and perfectionism from a, from a young age, as the oldest of four children, I, I kind of took a lot of that responsibility. And, and as I, as I've raised my own children and realizing that I want to give them and empower them with the tools that they need, I was able to change my own life so much that I knew I needed to serve others. I dealt with chronic illness for a long time. Um, we, we had a rough couple of years with my husband lost both his parents. I was in a, they passed away the same month. I was in a car accident. This, this all happened the same time I had my fourth baby within like a two month period. We had some financial problems. My husband decided to start his own physical therapy practice. I mean, it was a really rough year. That was 2013. And so since then I've just kind of been on this path of finding ways to serve others. And so, um, this whole last year during COVID, I have been in school and making sure I could be certified. I'm a certified performance coach and I'm working on a 
NLP certification, which is a neuro linguistics programming. It's a way to use our language to change patternings in our brain. And I'm also doing some EFT, which is some tapping that helps, um, like using your pressure points specifically for, for women that are dealing with issues with food, emotional eating, and those types of things that I dealt with. And I just feel like I need these tools so that I can um, share them with others and then they can, they can heal hopefully and go in turn be able to serve other people. That is really cool and really, really a great journey that you are on. And I have no doubt you will help so many people and I'm sure you already have helped so many people. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Very, You're welcome. very much. Yeah. You know, and um, I just want to say one thing before I ask you with a final question, you talked about um, kids and then even just then in your statement um, about people feeling a certain way and, and your belief of what is normal. Right. And I think it's really important, um, especially as young people. So Victoria, this works for you as well <laughs> um, to understand that normal is you. And you can only be your version of normal. The last question that I usually ask to close out these conversations as we depart today, as you go into your lives moving forward, if you are walking around in your community, at church, at sports, helping others, if you could hold up a sign that says one thing about you, what would each of you want people to know? That is really common to say is love, don't judge. I've been seeing that a lot, especially through this whole pandemic and everything that we've been through, I think loving everyone and not judging is something that I'd want on my sign to help show everyone. I think that's the biggest thing for me. Beautiful. I love that. And I love that because Tori saying that, that just is her. That's who she is. That's just the being that she is. Um, sorry, I just got my <laughs> I cry, think don't cry. one of my favorite quotes was something along the lines of, um, you were designed to do the work of your soul. So if you think about that or whoever your higher power is or your source, 